What's up, guys? Carlos back at it. Um, today we're going to talk about the rise of fantasy, the much-awaited, much-promised review. Some quick factoids about the book. It's um, know this. How many pages is it? Eh, it's about 110 pages, 106 pages. Uh, the author is Juan J. Barena. It is distributed by Vallejo and is printed by Action Press, Acción. Um, I don't know when it was made. Uh, I looked through it. There's no real uh, publication date. And um, this is the English version. I'm not that good at reading Spanish. I can read it a little bit, but uh, I kind of uh, wish I had gotten it in Spanish. So um, let's talk about the positive. The positive is uh, there is a lot of uh, really good color information in this book. Um, some of the, uh, like for example, in the beginning, there is... Uh, kind of ample sort of color advice and as far as like you know what you're gonna use for particular figures which I like and that continues kind of throughout the book I don't wanna you know I don't want to steal the book's thunder if you were considering about buying it um, so it definitely will help a person who is new at color combos, or even somebody like myself, like I saw some stuff in there that I want to use. Um, uh, Juan, or JJ, uh, as he's referred to in the book, kind of favors a warmer palette, so um, that's something, let me turn this around, that's something to think about if you are a person who, you know, wants to work with those colors or features those a lot in your work. The warmer colors, reds, yellows, oranges, uh, browns, and so on. That's definitely something to, uh, you'll find a lot of material here. Let me get my, uh, my notes. Some of the other good things are, let's see. Um, for somebody like me, uh, when I was reading it, I kind of, initially I kind of glanced through it and I wasn't super interested in a lot of the subject matter the guy had selected. So a lot of the figures are things that I've never heard of or uh, kind of like scenes that are that are just, you know, strange. Like something out of, one of them is kind of like an Alice in Wonderland thing. And I'm sorry you have to look at my face, but there's, there is a little bit of uh, nudity in the book. You know, there's like a couple, there's a couple figures that show... Uh, like a female figure with her breasts out. So, you know, I'm not going to delve into that. Uh, we show, we're willing to show, you know, graphic violence on TV in this country, but you can't see a woman's upper body. Too offensive. You know, you can see somebody get shot, but you can't see uh, nudity. So, anyhow. Uh, and also in the back, there's some cheesecake. So, parental advisory. <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so like I was reading it and I'm like, man, this guy clearly loves what he's doing. Because, I mean, he selected stuff that I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I'm not even the slightest interested in. And there's an inscription in here by his good friend, uh, Rafa Cole, that sort of talks about how this person kind of helped. It's actually a, a bit hard to read. And that's uh, one of the things that I'll get to as far as the cons is the translation. But his friend discusses how this guy kind of like inspired him and, and got him interested in some figures and that kind of thing. So yeah, definitely like, I think that the, the, the gentleman's love for painting fantasy miniatures comes across. And if you were somebody who's thinking about it, or maybe you have an interest that is uh, beyond war gaming, this can kind of get you started in that direction. Something else that uh, the gentleman talks about is composition. And that's something that I've definitely been lacking in my work. So you see here is uh, very bad quality. I apologize. Samsung doesn't let you switch back and forth between the front and the back of the camera. I don't. I don't understand. So anyhow, uh, wait. Okay, so um, 
So there is some discussion about that. There's n not a lot of, okay, we'll start talking about some of the drawbacks, okay? There is not a lot of uh, painting discussion. But I wouldn't necessarily fault the book. I would say that as far as like instruction goes, you would have, let me see if I, okay. So like if you were, if I was to rank as far as how like you could learn up here is one-on-one -on -one instruction. I've never received it, but I imagine it's up there. Right here is like watching a tutorial video for me. This is all for me, by the way. Here is maybe a, a PDF and color guide. And then here is like somebody telling you how they painted something, which is by far the least useful. And it's really, I don't, I don't fault anybody who tries to do it. If, if you're a person who can learn how to paint by reading what somebody's written about painting, then maybe that works for you. I, pr I don't find that particularly useful as somebody who's done a lot of reading, a lot of studying about miniaturing. It's like it w for a while there, I'd say when I started, it was like late 2008, early 2009. There were some videos out there. I mean, uh, Lester Bursley, um, who else was doing stuff? There was like some bootlegs of, of like, I think hot lead on YouTube and that kind of thing. And you could buy, some miniature painting DVDs. That was like, that was about it. Uh, around 2012 is when I heard about, I think maybe early painting Buddha was going on during that time. It might be a little later than that, but I heard about this thing called uh, Miniature Mentor. And I did uh, subscribe to them for a while. And Miniature Mentor, um, I think is a, when I started was a good value. I mean, uh, they kind of, they just give you sections. So like if, if you found a YouTube channel that uh, did exactly what you wanted to, then there wouldn't really be a reason to get miniature mentor. And there's quite a bit about sculpting and basing on there. But like if you spend $70, um, you have access to their entire library. You can download it and whatever. Uh, in Alaska with uh, bandwidth being what it is, you know, that's, it was for me, I think I had to stay at a hotel to get everything. But if you were living in a place in the lower 48 and you had access to, uh, you know, a more lenient or more generous bandwidth, then I, I definitely think it's worth getting uh, their service and downloading several other videos. In particular, some of the highlights are, um, let's kind of turn into a miniature mentor review. Sorry. <laughs> Won't do that. So anyways, the point is, is that I don't fault the gentleman for describing his painting and it kind of not clicking for me. That's, I wouldn't fault that. I'd say it's my problem with being able to turn the written word into instruction that I can use to paint with. So if that works for you, then, then by all means. Um, one of the other things is like, there's like a bit of a translation problem. There is a word for glaze in Spanish called, uh, veladura. Mm, looking at myself speaking Spanish. That's rough. There's another word, I believe, for layer called kappa. He, the, whoever translated this uses the word veil. And veil, like, I think contextually I've taken to mean glaze and layer. <laughs> so they're using the word veil because I've literally never heard anybody ever refer to a layer or a glaze as a veil. Uh, that book does. So, um... So again, like there's no discussion of consistency and there's definitely some assumptions by the author that you are already familiar with uh, most of the stuff that he's going to, you know, he he just says, use a wash, use a veil, um, prime or do that. So he kind of says how he applies the colors, but there's no mention of thinning. There's not a great deal of, di not that I found, not that I can remember. There's no great discussion of of any kind of that consistency or any of that stuff. And me personally, like I don't really need it, but if I was a new, if I was a new painter and I was looking for, you know, the go-to book as far as like how to paint, uh, I, I, I personally think that they would struggle to find that kind of information in this particular book, you know, just being honest. So, uh, what are some of the other things? I mean, he kind of, again, I'm not that interested in the subjects, but the guy, like what was transmitted is his interest 
that he can take these kind of random figures and, and mush them together and make something, you know, more, um, uh, you know, kind of greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, there's also like a, a very short, but I think succinct write up on how to make a, like a cool cracked earth, uh, or cracked cement type base. Let me see. It's more of a, uh, uh, ground with layers of milliput. So, and there's a little bit about vines, but in general, the subjects are very simple. And I think that's wise. I mean, that in particular is a good decision because, you know, I don't, I haven't really ever heard of this guy. Obviously, he's a good enough painter to have a book written, but the the subject matter in here is mostly pretty elementary stuff. You know, it's like a figure, a base, uh, maybe like another figure and maybe something come up through the middle, you know, or they're sitting on top of something. In the back, there's two more complex pieces. He builds like a small, like a section of a wagon, and he also builds like a dual, a dual layer uh, kind of bakery um, type uh diorama it's what is it called it's called the kitchen surprisingly enough Let's see if we can get a look at it so you see that there so it's kind of you know the guy's like obviously like a, a mad genius and he loves you know to take these kind of weird subjects and sort of elevate them so there's definitely something to be said for working with what you have and uh, kind of making it more than just what it is. Me personally, I'm 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 still, and and that's that one of the things that I think is good about it because I'm I'm in a place where I want to tr kind of go to the next level. I want to elevate. Um, I'm tired of just painting a figure on a base. It kind of got me thinking about it, but again, I'm much more of a I need to do it before I can kind of like really learn it. So. I'd say it's good for getting ideas and it's good for sort of planning and giving thought to composition. That stuff's still a little over my head. I might need to either reread that or look more into composition. It's not that hard to understand. I mean, he kind of, he, the, the interesting thing is he kind of discusses shapes. Like there's like a triangle shape or there's like a rhombus or how to have like, uh, like asymmetrical arrangement of your miniatures. The one that I'm speaking of and the one that I can't show because it's so indecent is like a, a lady who's got like a loincloth on but no shirt and she's like spearing a, a moray eel guy. So it's kind of like there's like a diagonal arrangement and he kind of discusses about how that asymmetrical configuration kind of draws attention to the female figure which is poised above kind of thrusting downwards onto the moray eel guy. So... Again, some, some things to think about that I've never thought about. So really, I mean, to recommend it, maybe, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. So, uh, yeah, um, buyer beware, I'd say, you know, or at least caveat emptor, right? Something like that. So, I mean, you, you could do worse, but if, if you were looking for, you know, something to kind of get you started, I, I, I'd start somewhere else because this book definitely makes some assumptions about your experience level and your ability. So, uh, it's valuable to me for the recipes and whatnot, and it kind of got me thinking about composition, and it really kind of got me interested again. So, I wouldn't necessarily blame that on the book, but... You know, it's for for twenty four bucks though. You know, I, I honestly I have a hard time recommending it. So, anyways, enough about that. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of the people who have you know on the last video. It wasn't meant to be like a uh, you know like hey guys you know like because you see that on the internet. People are like you know things are tough or I haven't you know it's not it's not like that everything's fine and uh nobody was like you know that concerned so but i mean it's really nice I, it's I, it's tough for me to uh take compliments um i don't really i don't understand how to respond to it uh very well but believe me it's it's very meaningful to me and i'm 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 glad that 
like and that's one of the other things like I, have, I haven't really mentioned it and I've never talked about it in a video but there's a lot of people who have sent me pictures of things that they've done and people are like really like getting close or exceeding some of the things that I've shown in my videos and I'm like man this is great like it's it's crazy to see that people are able to take <laughs> the things that I do and they're you know they're using it they're telling me that it's helping them and I you know like I said that's like that's really cool you know anyhow uh, I, I definitely have caught the bug again uh, I'm thinking you know about what I'm gonna paint um, I just bought a bust from privateer press this little guy right here and I have some paint in the mail and I'm hoping that it gets here pretty soon um, so I don't know you can see the conditions I'm working in. It's uh, pretty terrible, but if uh, if it, if anything can be learned from the videos, uh, I will try to. So, anyhow, uh, fight the good fight. Keep painting. Keep believing. I'll talk to you guys later.